Greetings YouTube. Today I'll be reviewing the book Weekends at Bellevue, Nine Years on the Night Shift at the Psych ER by Dr. Julie Holland, MD, or Julie Holland, MD. Just said Julie Holland, MD, but she's a doctor. She's a psychiatrist. Um, this title drew me in. I like the idea of kind of getting an insider's glimpse of what things are like at Bellevue, one of the most famous hospitals um, in America, and pretty much the name that most people know when it comes to psychiatric hospitals. Bellevue is uh, almost synonymous with insanity, uh, mental illness. And uh, kind of like the way Bedlam has ceased to be a place name and become just a word in our vocabulary. But it was a place at one time. Or, yeah, I guess technically it's still there. Um, but Bedlam was the name of, 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 of a, a madhouse um, and the, the name came associated with what happened there which is where now we say bedlam we mean chaos because that's what the, the existence of the people there was like so this covers her career from the earliest moments when she started doing her thesis up through her final retirement from the Bellevue uh, to go into full-time private practice and she was the night person. She worked two 15-hour shifts, Saturday night and Sunday night. And that was, she also had a meeting on Thursday. And pretty much that's it. That's her input for the week at the hospital. <coughs> and uh, I'm sorry. I had an annoying cough today. I don't know why. And I was, I, I find mental illness fascinating. I am mentally ill. And I find the insights into how people treat these disorders and the people themselves interesting. And I have to tell you that at the end of the book, I didn't like the author much. She's a good writer. I mean, it's not the most beautiful prose I've ever read, read, but she's a solid writer. She wrote this herself. So, you know, she does know how to convey the story in the proper manner for me to be interested in it. But I didn't like her as a person. And I didn't like how she treated her patients. Um, she referred to her patients as crazy, as insane, as retarded. At one point, she's discussing talking, dealing with a trans woman. And while talking to the trans woman face to face, she uses the pronouns she and her. But when talking about the trans woman, both to her colleagues at the time and to you, the reader, she refers to the trans woman as he or she male. That is unconscionable. It's, that's transphobic bigotry. It's rude. It's unprofessional. It makes you a douche nozzle. She's also not particularly introspective. For a psychiatrist, I find that fascinating. Now, every person that works in mental health is themselves going to be seeing some kind of a therapist to stay healthy. I understand that. But she chose to go see a Freudian, which is a waste of your freaking time. Because you hear a whole lot of, well, how does that make you feel? Give me the tools I need to solve my problems. That's why cognitive behavior therapy functions. And the doctor herself has a private practice or she's a, a psycho pharmacologist. Essentially, people just come to her to get drugs. But if you're not making sure that there is some kind of other therapy, those drugs aren't going to make the changes in their lives they need to have made for them to be healthy, which is the goal, not just to make this minute bearable but to help change their lives so that it is bearable and enjoyable and full of joy forever. So, again, I didn't like her much. But she was in therapy. And one of the reasons she was in therapy that she found when dealing with male prisoners, because all the prisoners from Rikers Island that had some kind of a mental problem were brought to Bellevue to be assessed, whether they went back to Rikers Island or whether they had to get treated there at the hospital, because they had some kind of a mental illness. When dealing with the male prisoners that are restrained, these guys are handcuffed into a wheelchair. 
she found herself being sadistic. She was raised by a type A aggressive misogynist of a father who made his own children compete for his affection. He was an ass. And yet, there is at no point in this book where the author ever tells, has ever says, that she came to understand that she was sadistic to these male prisoners restrained in chairs because she could be. Because her unresolved father issues were making their ugly head quite apparent. I picked this up. I'm hoping her therapist did, but she makes no mention. But you could say, well, Tetsubo, maybe she just didn't reveal that aspect of her personality. She talks about things as intimate or more intimate than that in her life in this book. Her sex life, the sex lives of others, the mental illness issues that she and other people dealt with. So she's talking about the, exactly the types of things that you would be talking about if you had finally come to understand that you were being sadistic to your own patients because you have unresolved father issues. And she never seems to have achieved that. I don't know if she's achieved it by now. I don't know if anyone who knows her will ever re read this book or read see this video, rather. But if they do, did she ever figure it out? Because I did. I mean, the first time she explained what she was going on, I figured out what, 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 was, what was the issue. She could be aggressive to those men because they were restrained in wheelchairs. Now, there were still interesting things in the book, and I finished it. It was interesting to hear about the workings of the hospital. I didn't necessarily enjoy the politicking of the hospital, but every organization has its politicking, and you're going to meet good people and bad people. And unfortunately, one of the best people at the hospital, her, um, well, one of her best friends, dies from cancer. And the replacement from this woman is not a good fit. And she and he do not get along. And that causes the political issues and ramifications that eventually, I think, began the process for her eventually leaving. So it's an interesting book. But I didn't like the author. I didn't like how she treated people. I didn't like how she talked about people. I didn't like how she thought about people. And I didn't like the fact that she herself never seemed to came, come to an understanding of her own issues. And she is part of a process that is divorced from functional therapy, cognitive behavior therapy, and yet she is still giving drugs to people. So, yes, I have a problem with that entire industry. Handing out drugs without an accompanying therapy is no solution. If the drugs go with therapy, that's perfect. That's wonderful. People, There are people who need the drugs, and I don't fault them for needing them. But if you're giving drugs to people with help therapy that goes with it, you're not helping. So, interesting book. But the caveat is, I just don't like the author.